Welcome to the second SY1 Youth Culture screencast where we're going to apply the functionalist perspective uh, to the phenomenon of youth cultures. And this is the first of several screencasts where we're going to look at uh, early research and theory uh, on youth cultures. And one way I think of understanding why young people belong to youth cultures is to see them as a collective solution, so a group solution, to the problems that young people experience in society. In other words, youth cultures can be theorised as a response to uh, shared problems of being young, such as the experience of powerlessness or, or being socially marginalised. And this particular way of looking at the social meaning of youth culture is something that most of the early approaches within the sociology of youth culture uh, share in common. And one of the earliest approaches to the study of youth cultures came from the functionalist perspective. According to the functionalist perspective, uh, young people are attracted to youth cultures because they give them a sense of belonging. In other words, to use the jargon, they have a social integration function and they also give young people a sense of identity uh, during the difficult and drawn out transition into adulthood. So functionalists therefore argue that youth cultures are really important in modern Western societies. They fulfil uh, an important function in providing support for young people who are experiencing the same kind of problems and anxieties. So youth cultures provide uh, psychological support uh, for young people, uh, enabling them to survive in a hostile social world and enabling them to manage the tension between child and adult identities. So let's look at this functionalist perspective now in a bit more detail. So what functionalists argue is that because the values and norms that we learn during childhood within the family uh, are not totally appropriate to the norms that we need to display in later life uh, in other institutions such as the workplace, the development of youth cultures perform an important function or social role in easing this transition. So for example, the functionalist writer Talker Parsons argues that youth culture acts as an important bridge uh, between childhood and adulthood. In other words, it helps young people become uh, more detached from their parents whilst they're moving towards uh, their own independence and status as adults. Now, in traditional societies, young people, uh, when they start puberty, often go through a rite of passage uh, ritual. So this is a ceremony uh, that formally marks the transition from childhood into adulthood. The functionalist argument is that within Western societies, youth culture has taken over this rite of passage role, uh, extending it over several years, but still acting as a transition from childhood to adulthood. So functionalists argue that young people need to find a way uh, to move from the secure, cosy world of the family to the competitive uh, adult working world, and that it's youth culture that enables young people to begin to make that transition, because youth culture uh, enables young people to become more independent from their parents, to create their own sense of self, and this begins to smooth the path between the conflicting values of the home and childhood and the adult world. In other words, youth culture plays a major role in the preparation, or to use the jargon, the socialisation of young people for the world beyond the family. And this is important because the values and norms that we learn during childhood within the family are not always totally appropriate to the norms that we need to display in later life in other institutions. Uh, for example, an employer is unlikely to respond favourably to being addressed by a pet name, whereas your father or mother uh, may encourage the use of pet names uh, within the family. Another functionalist writer, Eisenstadt, uh, also believes that youth cultures perform an essential function uh, in modern Western societies. Because adolescence is a period of limbo, so it's this in-between 
liminal stage between the security and ascribed status provided by the family and the achieved status that young people are expected to attain in adult life. As a result of this, young people turn to their peers, so young people their own age, who are experiencing the same problems and anxieties as they go through uh, this transitional stage. So in this respect, Eisenstadt argues that the peer groups that make up youth culture uh, fulfil an important psychological function. Uh, they provide support for young people in making this difficult transition uh, to adulthood uh, in industrial societies. And through fostering and adopting a shared way of life with their peers, uh, young people develop a sense of community and togetherness uh, to help them cope with this particular stage. So to summarise, functionalists are arguing that uh, within modern Western societies, such as the UK or America, youth cultures are important because they fulfil uh, two key functions. Firstly, they help to fulfil the social function of helping young people learn how to become adults. In other words, youth cultures are important agencies of socialisation that give young people uh, the opportunities to create uh, values, attitudes, behavioural norms that enable young people to become more independent and detached from their parents. And then secondly, there's also a, a function that youth cultures play for individual people in providing them with psychological support. So they provide young people with the emotional support that is needed uh, for surviving uh, in a hostile social world and for managing the tension between child and adult identities. So from this perspective, youth cultures for most individuals are a passing phase, not because people get fed up with them, but because as the teenager moves into adulthood, so as they learn the norms, responsibilities and so forth associated with this new social status, youth cultures lose their function for that individual. So once the transition period is complete, uh, youth cultures are no longer functionally necessary and they simply disappear. Now this functionalist analysis of youth cultures is a very general approach. So it's not particularly interested in the specific forms that youth cultures take. So functionalists assume that essentially uh, all types of youth cultures are the same because they perform these basic functions that I've outlined, irrespective of the particular style that's adopted. So functionists have argued that we should see youth culture as singular rather than as a plural notion, because regardless of whether or not we're looking at skinheads or punks or mods or rockers, participation in youth culture is seen as having the same social functions. And this has led to a lot of other sociologists criticising this basic functionist approach. So other sociologists have argued that by uh, overemphasising the shared features of youth culture, functionalists are ignoring uh, the clear and important differences that exist between distinct youth subcultures. And these youth subcultures are often based on young people from a particular social background. And therefore, by ignoring this, Critics argue that the functionalist perspective gives us no real insight into how the transition into adulthood might be affected by social factors such as class, gender or ethnicity. Now, as we've just seen, the functionalist perspective is all about the positive role that youth cultures play in easing the difficult transition from childhood into adulthood. If we look at more contemporary thinkers in sociology, such as the theorist Sigmund Bauman, they've argued that the conditions of contemporary society, what Sigmund Bauman calls liquid modernity, uh, mean that the traditional routes into adulthood have become increasingly uh, fragmented, protracted and non-linear. So for many young people, uh, the ritual markers of independence or adulthood, such as a job, 
a place to live, a new family, for example, have all but disappeared. And this in-between stage of youth has become extended uh, well beyond the adolescent phase that functionalism focuses on. So as I've just said, Bauman calls contemporary society liquid modernity. Uh, it's fluid, it's flowing, it's flexible. And according to Bauman, uh, within this new condition, change is the only permanence and uncertainty the only certainty. So Bauman argues that it's quite stressful uh, to live under what he calls liquid modern conditions. And he compares this to uh, walking in a minefield. Everyone knows that an explosion might happen at any moment. So within contemporary societies, things are insecure and uncertain all the time. So relationships are frail and fractious. Uh, jobs are often temporary and insecure. And nothing is certain or can be taken for granted. And what this means for young people is that under the conditions of liquid modernity, identity and transition to adult status and any economic independence that this might confer has become an experience of stops and starts with little uh, sense of sequence, rhythm or advance that is implicit in the functionalist accounts. And given the uncertainty and unpredictability that many young people uh, currently experience, particularly in the aftermath of the global financial crisis, it's no surprise that in this politically volatile world, it's young people who are at the centre of a wide variety of protest movements all around the world.